can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on. How's it going, guys? This is a Half Life 2 mod called the Stanley Parable. And I have not played it yet. This will be the first time I play it. Um, apparently, there. Why, when you start the game, there's uh, somebody narrating your life, and he tells you where to go, um, and you can actually change the events, so you can actually not do what he says, so, and that's all I actually know about the game, so let's get started. It sounds pretty exciting. I asked all my friends about it, I'm like, guys, did you play this mod? They're like, bro, I already played it. I was like, okay, well, I haven't, so I'm going to give it a shot. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. <laughs> Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Okay, so I guess I got up and walked out of the hallway. I want to work, damn it. Uh... Huh, okay. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Okay. I don't know where the staff room is, but... Is this it? No, these are the workstations, duh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Fuck you, I entered the door on my right. How do you know that? This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, <laughs> and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. So you thought, motherfucker. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere, and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. <laughs> what? So when he came to the elevator, and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. What if I go down, motherfucker? <laughs> this is awesome. I guess I can't really choose. Is there a button? Okay. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions that he should have been fired years ago. <laughs> this is awesome. This reminds me of that movie with uh, Will Ferrell. Um, shit, what was it called? Anyway, um, <laughs> so I guess we're going in here. Am I going to be punished? It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, 
It should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. What? But he thought to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. Oh, no, I take it back. So he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. No! Stanley. No, fuck you, narrator. I'm out of here. Where's the eject button? <laughs> huh? Farewell, Stanley cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. Oh, you dick. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body. So you thought, him uh, instantly. can I Mario jump out of here? I'm dead. Oh, wait. <laughs> I knew it. All right. And you. Ah. <sighs> It's a shame, then, that for all his work, it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? For real, I like you, lady. I like the way you think. We can play a game of chess later if you feel up to it. Alright. Do I go back to work? On the computer? Check my bills? Change my clothes? Okay. Exit, huh? This is really cool. So it's what I get Every for now. possible choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. I like you. We're going to call you Sarah. I like you, Sarah. You know how to make a man happy. Fuck you, narrator. The one before. Huh? There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The Aww, narrator had as Sarah, little power over now. Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. But listen to me. This story is not over. Okay. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Okay, let's do that now. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. Okay. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Okay. Stop Wait. now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Uh... Don't let time... <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> that, is, that is too cool. So is that it? Oh, I see. I do got X. All right, guys. That was the Stanley Parable. Uh, on the next video, I think we'll actually follow instructions this time. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time on Stanley Parable number two.